OK, so I want to make sure I am recording. Recording is happening. Cool. So. Um, all right, so there are I'm sharing my screen. There are a couple questions from this is week eight, and this is also in general for everyone that is doing normal distribution. And I'm assuming when I go through this that you have looked at my other videos and <clears throat> excuse me. And you know the difference between, you know, like standard normal distribution and, you know, uh, like regular just dis normal distribution when it's not standardized. So. Excuse me, if you don't know, you have to check the other videos or do your research because I'm going to speak as if you do know. OK, um, and, and speak as if, you know, you kind of know where I'm coming from and how I represent and how I talk about these things. So. I do have videos that talk about standard normal distribution separately and then basic normal distribution by itself as well. And then now I'm doing particular examples within normal distribution. So. First, looking at this, OK, the average American man consumes 9.8 grams of sodium each day. Suppose that the sodium consumption of American men is normally distributed. OK, so that means. It's normally distributed, it has that standard normal distribution curve, it's symmetric, it's bell shaped, the center is the mean with a standard deviation of 0 0.8 grams. So, pause. I know average consumption, I'm gonna put that up here, is mu for the population of men, 9.8 grams, okay, of sodium. It says it's normally distributed. Good to know. I need to know that. Um, with a standard deviation for the population, sigma of 0 0.8 grams. So I'm really hoping that you, I, I talk about this in my videos also, the notation between X bar and mu. X bar is sample um, mean, and then mu, this is called mu, population mean. You know, this is population standard deviation. So you, Go back again and check the videos, check you know what you need to check um, to determine notation if you're not sure, but this is population mean stand, uh, population standard deviation. Okay, so they gave me this information already. Um, which means actually that I'm normally distributed and symmetric and the center of this curve is the mean 9.8. I'll show you when I actually um, draw it down here for, for the examples, okay? So suppose an American man is randomly chosen. Suppose one American man is randomly chosen. Let X be its distribution, the amount of sodium consumed. Round all numeric answers to four decimal places, right? We want to know how to round. What is the distribution of X? This is only asking, and this is how we represent the distribution of X, which represents the amount of sodium consumed for men. The distribution of X is normally distributed with a mean of 9.8 comma and a standard deviation of 0 0.8. That is all this question asks. This is how we represent the distribution represented by X, our random variable. It's normally distributed. And then this is my mean and my standard deviation. It's nice, basic. It's not standard normal distribution. It's a nice, basic, normally distributed kind of situation. So and this is all that this question is asking for. Um, when you get into the central limit theorem, then maybe these values will change a little bit dependent on your situation. But for now, this is just mean and standard deviation. That's it. And they give you that. Find the probability. Now, again, if you've seen my videos, they're asking for probability. That means they want area. OK, if I want probability, I want area. So let me draw this curve. I'm normally distributed. The middle of this curve is 9.8 grams. This is a normal distribution curve, and I want probability, which means I want area. Find the probability. Where is this area that I'm looking for? That a man, an American man, consumes between 10.5 grams. So if the center of this is 9.8, which is the mean, 10.5 would be bigger than that to the right of it, and 11.2 grams. 11.2 would be even further. Now this is, you know, not a perfectly drawn figure because I don't know where 10.5 is relative to 9.8 off the top of my head, but that's OK. The picture is just to give me a visual of what I'm calculating. So I want a probability, which means I want an area of the situation 
um, that a man, an American man consumes between 10.5 and 11.2 grams of sodium per day. So that means I want the area between those two values. And so, again, if you've watched my other videos, if I want area, that means that I'm looking for normal CDF on my graphing calculator. Okay, um, let's go to my graphing calculator and do it. Normal CDF is found. See distribution up here on top of bars. So second and bars, and we want normal CDF, which is number two. So if I want area, I want normal CDF. Now, um, hopefully you know how to input this because I've shown it in other stuff. Lower, so the lower um, portion, the lower portion of the area in this case is 10.5. Um, oops. Don't want 0.5. The upper portion of this area is the higher end of this little region, 11.2, 11 11.2. 11 um, and then my mean, what was my mean? 9.8 and my standard deviation was 0.8. The only time I have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one is if I'm on a standard normal distribution curve or I'm dealing with Z scores, which I'm not here. Again, my mean is 9.8, I was given this and my standard deviation was 0 0.8. Okay, go down to paste. And those of you that don't have the TI-84, that don't have, you know, where it asks you for lower and upper, you have to know the order in which you input it, and this is what it would look like for you. So 10.5, the lower bound, 11.2, the upper bound, your mean, 9.8, and your standard deviation, 0 0.8. And I, I like to do this, you know, see this here? Should match this portion. Okay, and that will help with your central limit theorem also. So let's see what we get. Approximately, so we're rounding to 4.1507. 0 0.1507 is my probability. Now, they don't ask for percentage or anything, so I'm not converting that to a percentage, but approximately 15.07% um, of American men consume between 10.5 and 11.2 grams of sodium per day. Okay, this is my probability. So again, if they ask for probability, you are asked for area and we use normal CDF. Let's look at the next question here. I wanted to do these two particularly. I get it. Uh, and then I have one more after this that I want to do particularly as well. Um, the middle 20% of American men consume between what two weights of sodium? So now they're asking for the weights of sodium. They're asking for grams, right? They're asking for the grammage. <laughs> How many grams? And they give me area. I'm going to say area given because when I'm given a probability, when I'm given a percentage, that means I'm given an area, which means and if I'm, I know area and I want the values, then I'm talking about using inverse norm. Okay, so I go over this a lot in my other videos, you know, when to use inverse norm and when to use normal CDF. That's really the, that's really the foundation of this. Normal CDF or inverse norm? Which one is it? Do you want area? Normal CDF. Do you know area and you want the value? Inverse norm. Now, this is a little bit tricky. So 9.8 is the center of this. That's the um, center, the average grammage. I made it my word. Grams of sodium for men. And so all the values on the horizontal scale here represent weight of sodium. Um, and I want the middle 20%. So middle, you know, 20% is gonna be a middle area. And if, if I'm in the middle, right, then obviously I'm centered, <laughs> 20%. So this shaded region is 20% of 0.2, right? I convert it to a decimal. Now, how is this gonna help me? When I'm using inverse norm, if you recall, and we find inverse norm in the same place that we do normal CDF. So distribution, second, bars, inverse norm is number three. You'll see it asks for an area. Now, some of you have this option where it asks for area to the left, to the center, to the right. If you don't have this option, um, then you have to do it a specific way. If you do, it becomes easier, but I'm gonna show it as if you don't have that option just so that it's more general for everyone. So I'm going to assume that I don't have this option here because not everyone will so that, you know, um, you know, it's more general. Everybody can do it together. So um, the middle 20 percent. So assume I don't have that option. Here we go. I need to figure some stuff out. So 
I'm going to put my red thing here. Now, let me ask you, and I hope you know, that if 100%, right, of all the shaded region is 100%, that's part of the, the properties of these uh, particular types of curves. That's why the area can be represented as probability or percent. Total area under the curve, which is not shaded here, is 100%. So if I have my mean in the center, then that means that 50% is to the left of that, and 50% is to the right of that. So I might as well do it. 0.5 is this total area to the right. 0.5 is this total area to the left to give me 100% or one, one in decimal form of the area. So why is that important? I want to find this value here. Let's do this in green. So I'm going to call this X. Okay, let's call it X1. So I'll put X1 here. This is the first one that I'm going to find, which is my lower bound of this area, right? So I want to know what the area to the left of this is. I'm not given that. So I need to figure it out. And the reason that I want the area to the left is because that's what we typically input into inverse norm when it asks for area. So how do I find the area to the left? Well, it doesn't tell me, but I do know that if if 20% or 0.2 is between these two um, vertical lines, then that means that, let me grab another color here for a second, half of that is here and half of that is here. So each pink section is 0.1. Each pink section is 0.1, right? Because I'm splitting it in half. So I know that this pink section is 0.1. I know that the area to the left of my red line is 0.5. So I take a total 0.5 and I take away 0.1 and I'm left with 0.4. So all the area to the left of, of 9.8 is 0.5 and I took up 0.1 here. So I'm left with only 0.4 to the left of X1. So that's how I determine the area to the left of this value here. And I need that because that's what I'm doing an inverse norm with. So my area to the left is 0.4. My mean is, I want to say 9.8, right? 9.8, 9.8, not 9.6, ah, 9.8. My standard deviation was 0 0.8. I'm going to leave this as area to the left because that's what we're focusing on. Those of you that don't have the fancy 94, if that you have an 83 or something, that's fine. You just have to know the, the order in which we input it. So inverse norm, always, I'm going to write that here, inverse norm, always area to the left, which was 0.4, mean 9.8, standard deviation 0.8. And it's always assumed that this is the area to the left. So let's see what this lower end, this lower weight is for the middle 20%. 9 point now does tell us that we want to round all answers to four decimal places. We probably would not think to do that here, but it says it and it doesn't change it. So we're going to take four decimals. 9.5973. 9.5973 grams. So my lower point, my lower value that separates the middle 20% is 9.5973 grams. Okay. So that's my first part. What color am I going to use for the upper part? Purple? Purple. Okay. Purple. X2, we'll call it over here. X2. So I'm obviously going to use inverse norm again. So now it's just a matter of determining the area to the left of that one. An area to the left of that one starts here and goes all the way over here. Now remember that I said that... Um, my kid. Remember that I said that the area to the left of the center is 0 0.5, right? 0.5. So I'm taking 0.1 more than that. So area to the left of this is 0.6. Now I don't typically like to write my area below, so let me not do that. I like to write it above. So I'm not confusing it with these values on the horizontal scale that represent grams. This area to the left of X2 is 0 0.6. 0 0.5 plus 0.1. So my area to the left of X2 is 0.6. My mean is 9.8. My standard deviation is 0 0.8. X2 is approximately. So let's go back to inverse norm. Hold on a second. 
vars, inverse norm. Area to the left was 0 0.6. And then I'm not changing this. It's the same situation. Paste. 10 point, I'm taking four digits to the right of the decimal, 10.0027 rounding up. Approximately 10 point, I already forgot what I said, 0027 grams. So I'm gonna write that here. That's the high end of the middle 20%, 10.0027 grams. So the, um, the middle 20% of American men consume between 9.5973 grams and 10.0027 grams. Okay. Um, so the reason that I wanted to do this particular problem was this middle 20%. This is always a question that I get every semester. Another one that I get every semester, and I'm probably not going to do every single one of these. So maybe I have time to. We'll see. Um, I was going to say, maybe I'll separate it into a separate example, but you know what? Let's just do it all in one shot. So <clears throat> let's do this. So let's talk about this one. So this is a different example. The amount of time that people spend at Grover Hot Springs, Springs is normally distributed with a mean of 63. So I'm going to just go straight here. What is the distribution of X? X is distributed normally with a mean of 63 and a standard deviation of 17 minutes. Mean standard deviation. Suppose one person is chosen, let X equal the amount of time that person spends at Grover Hot Springs. So everything is basically amount of time spent at this spring, Grover Hot Springs. So um, I'm gonna, I wanna skip this problem, but maybe I won't. Find the probability, I'll do it faster, that a randomly selected person at the hot springs stays longer than 86 minutes. Probability is area. I want area, the center of this curve this time, it's normally distributed. The center 63, an average of 63. Longer than 86 minutes, 86 is to the right of 63 because it's bigger, and longer is to the right. So I want the area to the right of this. So I'm gonna do normal CDF because I want area. And my lower bound here is 86, and my upper bound here is infinity, so I'm just going to use a large positive number. My mean was 63, and my standard deviation was 17. Remember I said this should match this. Let's go straight to normal CDF. Second bars. Sorry. Normal CDF is number two. Lower bound is 86. Upper bound is a large positive number. My mean was, I think, 60, 63. My standard deviation was 17. And let's see what I get. Round to four, right? So 0 0.0880. This is not going to round up because three is next to it. So 0 0.0880. So approximately 0 0.0880 is my probability. I'm going to skip C. Um, the reason is because it asks for a value. I'm going to go straight to D because this is the question that I typically get from students on these kind of things. So how do I find the interquartile range? How do I find the um, Q1, Q2? Well, you don't need to Q2. Interquartile range Q3 and Q1. Third quartile and first quartile. So um, the reason I skipped C is because it's kind of similar in the sense that we are given area and we want to find the value. So I know I'm going to use inverse norm. So let's start with Q1. I guess I could give myself some more space. All right, so Q1 is the first quartile, also known as, if you recall, and these are the answers, so let me get space, also known as Q1, the 25th percentile. If you remember, give myself some space. Q1 was the 25th percentile. So if you remember what that means, it means that it separates the lower 25% of the data set from the upper 75%. So if I have a normal distribution situation, which is what I have here, with the mean being the center 63, 
my standard deviation was given a 17, right? This step was given. Um, the lower 25%. So lower 25%. I know percent. I know area. And lower would be all the way down here. So I'm talking about lower 25%. I'm talking about this area being 0.25. And I want to find, I'm just going to call this, well, we'll say Q1. Technically, it's X, but Q1 is that particular quartile. So I want to find the value here, which is time spent at the hot spring, that has 25% below it. Now, this is easy. Inverse norm is what I use when I know percent or probability or area. I already know the area to the left because it's 25%. I know the mean and I know the standard deviation. So this is like a straight up plug and chug kind of situation. So let's go to inverse norm, second bars. And area to the left is 0.25 because it's the 25th percentile. The mean was 63. I'm going to have to verify that. And the standard deviation was 17. Yep, 63 and 17. I'm leaving this, right? We're assuming that everybody has the same thing. Area to the left, paste. I get, and we're rounding to four digits to the right of the decimal because it didn't change our instructions. 51.5337. 51.5337 minutes. So that's my first quartile. I knew I wouldn't have space. I didn't have enough space here. Move all this out of my way. Oh, yeah. Take that out of there. Okay. So 51. <laughs> point 51.5337 minutes is Q1 my first quartile also known as the 25th percentile hopefully you recall I'm gonna do this in green actually can I do pink I like pink too in pink <laughs> let's move this down um we're gonna do the third quartile and the third quartile is also known as the 75th percentile. So Q3 is the 75th percentile, which also separates 75%, the lower 75% from the upper 25%. Now, again, I'm normally distributed. The center of this curve is 63. Uh, the mean is 63. The standard deviation of the population is 17. This represents average time and standard deviation of the time a person spent at Grover Hot Springs in minutes. 75th percentile separating the lower 75th, but being that 50% is to the left of 63, 75% is going to be pushed all the way over here. Q3 has got to be here because 75% is greater than 50%. And I'm talking area to the left. Right? So 75% is this area to the left, 0.75. So this is easy again. Q3, I do inverse norm because I know the area um, and I want the value, which in this case is time. And 0.75 is the area to the left. Mean is 63. Standard deviation is 17. This stuff is not bad. It's very repetitive. I'll tell you that. It's repetitive. But definitely remember it because you're going to need it later also. Everything's already in here. For me, I just have to change the area, 0.75. My mean is 63. My standard deviation is 17. And good to go. Let's get it. 74.4663. All right, so 74.4663 minutes. So the 75th percentile is 74.4663, also known as Q3. My life becomes easy for IQR because it's straight up Q3 minus Q1, which I have here. And I'm just going to go to my calculator. I have it here too. 74 point blah was Q3 minus 51 point blah, whatever that, right? Or you can subtract these two values. And I get 22.9327. Round that up because this is five. So 22, approximately 22.9327 minutes is my IQR, okay? So I wanted to show this one too because um, I always get questions about Q1 and Q3. I don't know if it's due to the fact that we forget what the Q1 and Q3 represent. 
um, but they actually represent a percentile, percentage, percentile, percentile, a value separating a percentage to the left, okay? So that fits right in with our inverse norm for this kind of situation. So I hope that makes sense. I hope we're cool with that. And I wanted to do those to help with that. So I will see you guys next week.